Hello, good afternoon. It's an honor to have you tuned in to Hot Issues on TV3 with me, Nuong Falong. On November 13, the finance minister came before parliament to present the 2020 budget and policy statement. Since then, the policy document has come under scrutiny from different quarters. Today, we're going to delve into the 2020 budget with parliament's ranking member on the finance committee, Kessil Atto Forsen. Good afternoon, Honorable. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on Hot Issues. Thank you. You are in parliament for the budget reading. What's your general assessment? Let me say I was disappointed. What specifically they disappointed you? Disappointed because the ordinary Ghanaian mm -hmm. wanted our minister for finance and the president in whose authority the minister appeared before parliament mm -hmm. to provide us specific solutions to some of the problems that we face. Problems I noticed, like? yes, we, he himself admitted to some of the problems like hardships in the system, one, the fact that taxes are going up, taking money from people's pocket, and above all, some concerns we have with our road infrastructure. Yet, he made a lot of talk, but it's not back to the numbers. Let me tell you, madam, the truth of every budget statement is that a budget statement is an exercise of bringing out policies that will accumulate revenue and policies in how you will distribute the revenue in a way of expenditure. So oftentimes, you look at the talk. The talk does not necessarily mean they are going to distribute it in line with the talk. So I'm mostly interested in where the money is going to go, the appropriations. And that is why Parliament passes what we call the Appropriations Act. The Appropriations Act is a list of all the expenditure lines in the budget statement of which the minister responsible for finance will use as a guide in spending money. You mentioned roads. Yes. Government is going to pay 80% mm. of the fees to contractors. Mm. Isn't that good news? How are they paying it? You see, um, um, uh, what I have to do for me to assess as to whether they are going to pay 80% or not, is it in the numbers? So for me, I do not accept statements from minister saying that 80%. Would the minister if I'm to, the Oh, he country? has, he has. You're saying speak the minister to, has speak, the speak, speak, to, speak to road contractors. What they have provided here as road arrest is about 1.2 billion Ghana cities. Road arrest. Arrest is accumulation of debt owned to contractors. And that is what technical terms will call it road arrest. The road arrest in the budget is 1.2 billion Ghana cities. The amount of money they owe to road contractors is in excess of 4 billion Ghana cities. But it's expected that this is going to be a continuous payment. No, one no but, but he himself, I didn't say that. He said he's going to pay 80%. If you're going to pay 80%, it presupposes the money is sitting there, that he's going to use it to pay. But yet you have. No, but 80% to begin with, and 80% does not, 80% of 4 billion does not translate to 1.2 billion. So for me, it's I not agree. just the talk, it is the action. He himself said this budget is going to be a year of roads. Forget it. It's not supported by the numbers. And I'll take you into the government um, document. This is not my document. It's the document of the Minister of Finance. Is it, and can first of all, verify? you can verify. This is the budget statement and economic policy of the government of Ghana for 2020 financial sure. year. On the authority of His Excellency Nana Adudanku Akufu, I presented to Parliament. You may go on. Okay. We know that all of us as a country, we, we, anytime we buy fuel, mm -hmm. you buy diesel, petrol, or LPG, a you percentage to, the road. to road fund, and you contribute 40 pesos. 40 pesos per Brilliant. every liter you consume goes to the road fund. The purpose is that since you're a road user, you should contribute for the maintenance of the road, and that is why we pay for. In the year 2020, this budget statement has said taxes on domestic goods and services, mm -hmm. of which road fund levy is bringing in 1.659 billion Ghana cities. I'm not the one saying it. This according to Appendix 3, Government of Ghana. 1.659, approximately 1.7 billion Ghana cities. So you find out how much of this money that you are contributing, that I'm contributing, is going to go to road fund. Okay, so you can only see that in the expenditure. 
you take 1.7 billion Ghana cities from the taxpayer, and you are telling us that you are going to use the money. It's called a year of growth, a year of roads, and you are only giving 1.1 billion Ghana cities to the road sector. Do you really mean it? Well, this is uh, the figure he has put forward for now. Mm -hmm. So we have no idea. It is if not, budget is not excess. about for now. Okay. Budget is it's not about for now. Yes, but, you see, but it, projects are continuous. The okay. projects are continuous. But you see, if you say it's going to be a year of roads, it shouldn't be just words. Back it with money. With, the figures. with money. And that is why oftentimes we say stuff, and in the course of the year, we have implementation challenges. Okay. You see, we have implementation challenges because we don't back it with resources. It's just all talk. And that is why I said this budget is empty. It's all talk. It's not backed with revenue. It's not backed with resources for us to deliver what we intend to have. This is an administration that in the year 2017 promised us a list of roads. Nothing happened. 2018 promised us a list of roads. A hundred of them. Nothing happened. 2019, in fact, I've listed 123 roads in the budget statement. They repeated the same roads in the 2000. 2020 budget, nothing has happened. Exactly. So why should I expect as, something as to happen? As far as you're concerned, nothing has happened. Yes. So, so let's look at 2016, when the NDC also said it was a very good year for okay. them. Uh, the NDC claimed it focused on infrastructure in right. 2016. Right. Uh, the, the majority also claimed that mm. that infrastructure was mainly ghost infrastructure. Why? why? They should because they say, wouldn't have to be spending it, so much on say, roads um, now. Um, uh, they say, and, and that is the fallacy of the whole matter. Because we know that in as much as we invested so much on roads, there is the need for us to maintain the roads. Okay, so when you put a, a lovely house and you fail to maintain the house, after all, the house will deteriorate. In three years? Oh, yes, of course. Even it's if in, the road no, was it, of good it, quality? It, 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 you see, if, if you do surface dressing, an engineer will tell you do surface dressing, occasional potholes comes in. So you're you saying have the NDC did focus on roads. Yes, we did. But those focus on roads, roads need maintenance. See, but, but it doesn't mean we, we, we built all those roads in 20, uh, only in 2016. We, some of the roads were built in 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016. There are times we have to maintain the roads. And I can tell you. And it is for that reason that in the year 2016, His Excellency President John Mahama, knowing that it's even, though, even though it's an election year, decided to take the bullet and said, that, look, we need to increase the levy that is supposed to go to road fund for the purposes of maintaining our roads. And so he decided to increase the road fund levy from 8 pesos to 40 pesos. How many percent increase? Massive. Increase it so that the revenue that is going to accumulate, he will use the money for the purposes of fixing the roads. So by the time he was leaving, he had set up a structure, a structure that is bringing such money for the purposes of fixing the roads. Now, after he left, 2017, the government decided to cap the money that is going to go to road fund. 2018, they capped it. 2019, they capped it. And 2020, they are taking about 700 million from road fund. So far, the amount of money they have taken from Ghana road fund alone is two, or in excess of 2 billion Ghana cities. Sister, let me tell you, that amount is in excess of what Sino Hydro is bringing into our economy for the purposes of fixing the roads. Uh, the Minister for Communications, Ursula Usu, yesterday, she was encouraging the GRA to sit down with telecommunication companies uh -huh. and tax profits from mobile money. Is this something you'd support? You see, I've always said that she, she doesn't understand um, taxes and it's not for her. Why it, not? You say, look, taxes, uh, profits are always taxed in this country. We so have she's a robust. saying tax so, no so, more profits. So, so, so you say, if you're a company, uh, and you've registered um, mobile money, and you are a vendor, and you are a company, it's tax, your, your income as profit is taxed already in the system. She, she has no clue. She has no clue. It's already taxed. If you are an individual, and you have to pay income tax, income tax, your income is the work that you are doing. So you assess that income, and then you are taxed according to the threshold. And so she should not. I've always advised her, my friend, that she should stay away from taxes because she has no clue and allow it to the Minister for Finance. She has technical people, tax experts, who understand the subject matter. Well, she should not go into areas that she has no knowledge about. The point is, these companies yes. are making profits upwards of 80 million cities every month. But they are taxed already. Yeah, Every tax company is taxed. Yes, all of them. You see, you see the, the truth is that 
if you are a vendor, before, um, what do you call it, the mobile um, uh, telecommunication companies will, 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 will apply a tax on you uh, and will allow you to be a vendor. You have to either be a registered company or a registered, um, what do you call it, self-employed. Okay, trading us. Okay, so, 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 so it's an enterprise or a company. So enterprise and the companies, even if you are individual, you have to pay income tax. Enterprise and companies, are, uh, company pays corporate income tax. But it's enterprise also pays, so yeah, you're, you're vendors. It doesn't, uh, it's not prudent to tax the final profit going to the telcos. No, I haven't said that. What I've said is that what they are talking about, that the, the individuals, their income is tax. And the final profit that goes to the telcos, it fits into the telcos, their profit. And it's also taxed. So their total fits into their total profit. Yes, it fits into a total pro pro profit. And let me do an so illustration. You're, you're saying the minister does not know this. She doesn't know this. So she, if she knows about this, she wouldn't have made that kind of comments. And that is why I'm saying that she should not go to areas that she she doesn't know about. I make hundred Ghana cities. This hundred Ghana cities, that is profits probably is shared between the vendor. Okay, so so the vendor get fifty, and then the the, the MTN let's say get fifty. Right. This 50 feed into the MTN profit of, let's say, 1,000. So, so they get 1,050. This is taxed. This is a company. It's also taxed. So what is he talking about? So she's, I mean, saying things that probably she has no idea. Unless what I heard earlier on, and then I've, I've made this statement, is that government intends to tax mobile money operations. It doesn't mean taxing no, profit she, she actually of the doesn't vendors. agree with mobile money operations uh -huh. being taxed. Yes, so if agree with the consumer barrier Exactly. Tax. So she, if she doesn't agree to it, the, the profit for the vendors and the profit for the telcos are already taxed, so she should keep quiet about it. A few, uh, about a month ago, you took her on concerning the CST. Yes. She did explain that she wanted you to proceed to court mm. if you found anything mm. wrong. Do, mm. Should we expect further action and say, from you? Um, two things. She gave directive to the telcos to actually um, um, instructing them instructing them on how the CST be applied. And I said, that is not your responsibility. You the revenue, the, the revenue Administration Act is specific. It says that matters relating to revenue, and revenue is the lifeblood of a country. You won't allow any sector minister with little knowledge on the issue of, and it's a technical matter, to be instructing on revenue issues. It can have negative impact on revenue. Even if it has positive impact on revenue, that positive in impact may distort economic activities. And so those issues of revenue should be left with Ghana Revenue Authority. And this is according to law. And if you check section one, uh, uh, section one of the Revenue Administration Act, A and B, is there, black and white. And that is why we started with section one. And by the way, I sponsored that bill through parliament and I debated it. And I remember it as if I'm debating it today. And that is why I spoke to her, asked her that, please don't go to that area. Don't go to that area. Unfortunately, she won't understand. Oh, no, but no. what happens is that after sitting with the GRA, um, the telcos, they said that GRA is still going to charge the, what do you call it, um, telcos on upfront, on, uh, based on upfront payment. But going forward, Telcos are not going to deduct upfront. Whatever it is, the value is the same. You are still going to be, the incidence is on the consumer. It is not on the company. The value is the same. Honorable, let's move on to Kelney GVG. Mm. Government says Kelney GVG has provided the state with some 2.2 billion CD mm. revenue. 2.2 so billion? Yes. <laughs> it's a lie. Do you support this policy? It's, it's, it is a lie. Um, my Prove sister, me let, me, let me tell you, lie. let me tell you something. And... Um, 2019 budget statement on revenue. Okay, I have the 2020 budget statement here. Sure. Madam, taxes on, on domestic goods and services, communication service tax, for the whole 2020, this is for next year, it's not even this year. Next year is after they have increased it by 50%. The entire revenue that is going to come is 436 million. The entire revenue, 436 million. 436 million, and she's saying it's brought what 2.6 billion. Are you how many times that? But That's are you impressed by the but figures? It's, you see, you see, this is after 50 percent increase in the in, in the, the tax, 50 percent increase in the tax. So, what, what is she talking about? And I'll try and get you the, the numbers and um, on um, 
how much we've had so far on CST dating back 2019. So 2019, the budget projected that communication service tax is going to be 423 million Ghana cities. After revising the budget, they, they said it will be 524 million Ghana cities. In fact, from January, mm -hmm. first, first quarter to, to third quarter, quarter, so from January to September 2019, the actual amount, this is the program, they had programmed to have communications uh, service tax 435, but what they have received here is provisional, is 291 million Ghana cities. 291 million cities from January to September. And he's saying that they have provided, Kearney GVG has provided 2 point something billion. Please, they should say that to people that don't understand. It doesn't, it's not the truth. We so met, you, so you we the met. the policy has not brought in enough revenue? The policy, which policy? On, on, on the Kearney GVG, it hasn't. We met with the Finance Committee of Parliament, met with the Ghana Revenue Authority, the GRA. And this is what they presented to Parliament on November 7, 2016. If you have CST as a tax item, it confirms with these numbers. Right. Okay, so what is he talking about? Okay, I'm a tax practitioner and I know what I'm talking about. She should not go into areas that basically she has little knowledge on. She may have her comfort zone as a lawyer. I respect that. But please, Kearney GVG has not brought two point something billion Ghana cities to the people of Ghana. In fact, the state Ghana has paid Kearney GVG to date $70 million equivalent to 300 and something million Ghana cities. So the entire revenue that we are getting here is going to Kelly GVG. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Honorable, Sadly. Honorable, your members of, your fellow members of parliament, uh, of the minority corpus, when the budget was being read, you termed it a bye-bye budget. Does this mean you're not impressed by the contents of the budget? Um, it's not an impressive budget. And we know that the people of Ghana is going to vote against them and they are not going to come back because a bad budget deserves an exit. I'm a member of parliament and um, uh, I'm privileged enough to interact with people. Mm -hmm. um, the good people of Ghana are so disappointed in this administration. The people that I know, them to be MPP, are so disappointed in the management of, by, by President Akufuado, the management and the handling of this country. And they think that, look, that is not the way to go. People think that the country deserves a change. So. The, uh, someone told me this morning, I told we are going to vote to change the change that we brought. What happens if they disappoint you? Um, I, I do not think that they will disappoint us. And just like His Excellency the President himself said when he recently visited Volta Region that uh, God brought MPP uh, so, so that we will see uh, 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 the good work of the NDC. <laughs> he put it that way, from mm. prior to paraphrase. The, the Minister of Finance we can said, appreciate the NDC. Yes, he, he said the NPP had put 12.2 billion Ghana cities into the pockets of Ghanaians. I laugh at Interflag Staff House. <laughs> and why am I laughing? Right. If you just sit down mm. and say that, one, you have provided, um, what do you call it, um, BEC subsidy, and so you've put in money in people's pocket. We started paying BEC sub subsidy. I was privileged to be at the Ministry of Finance. We were paying BEC sub subsidy over the years. We did not put money in people's pocket. Is that what he's telling me? Yeah, it's the, Look, the accounting we tax were, relief, we financial were, we relief. Were, we, were, we were putting, giving people fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Okay, fertilizers. And he's counting it as, um, in, in, in his budget, he said about 880 billion people. Uh, 880 billion people. How many Ghanaians we have? We have eight, 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 30 billion. Uh, 30 million, and he said 880 billion people have benefited from planting for, planting for food, food and uh, jobs. I think 880 million farmers. Yes. That was the figure. No, 880,000 million. It means 880 billion. I think they may have been a genuine mistake. How many people? No, no, are but, in but, Ghana? but, but, but have, have, have they come to confirm whether it's a mistake? Have they said that? I don't know. They have said it because the matter we've been discussing is. Well, it's, it's a simple matter of reasoning it out how many Ghanaians do we sister. have in this country yes but you see you see you see it shows a government that is in hurry to cook numbers and they overcook and Ghanaians have found out this time they have over overcooked their numbers you're still watching hot issues on tv through we speaking with a ranking member of parliament's finance committee Casey Atto Forsen we'll go for a quick break when we come back hot issues continues
Welcome back. You're still watching Hot Issues on TV3. I am Nuang Falong. We are still speaking with Ranking Member of Parliament's Finance Committee, Tessil Atul Forsen. Let's look at total revenue and grants in oh. the budget. Oh. Uh, the Finance Minister did mention in the first half of 2019, total revenue reached 22.7 billion. Uh -huh. We all know that was below the projected target. Mm. That's all. The projected target was 26.9 billion, 15% shortfall. I've always cautioned our vice president that look, policy formulation is not a spare of the moment populist policy that you come out and just announce. You have to properly do sit down and do some work. Policy formulation is not a comic So you relief. did not agree with the introduction, uh, hey, look, reduction it, of the see, benchmark it's, values? It's, it is not about me agreeing or disagreeing. It is about the pronouncement that he made that it is not going, going to, to become uh, it's going to increase revenue, it's not going to reduce revenue, and import volumes are going to increase. If import volumes are coming down, and then what is happening, uh, revenue is also going down. 2.3 billion. What they have said is that by end year it is going to be 3 billion Ghana cities losses. Everything is in disarray. The revenue handles are not doing well. And you know what that policy has done? I don't know if you've spoken with AGI. I do speak with AGI quite okay. often. And AGI is They are worried about the effect it has on industries. In fact, negative effect. Negative on, on effect industries. on industries. Yeah. And that negative effect on industry will mean that they may not be making profit enough as they were making before. As a result, they are not paying much taxes on corporate income tax. Mm -hmm. That negative effect that they are making is that they will downsize their employment. And if they downsize, that household is not getting money. So it's creating some hardships in certain homes. And that is also implying that because they are downsizing, they are not paying uh, uh, those workers' salaries of which they would have deducted personal uh, PAYE, pay as you earn taxes, of which they will pay to the uh, uh, GRA. So revenue is also coming down in that area. What it means also is that you are, you are making imports cheaper at the expense of your what do you call it, of, of your industries. Yeah. You think say, this is a policy that a vice president should announce and he call himself economic guru. And so we should all clap for him. He, doesn't, he, did, he didn't do that kind of analysis. So far, you haven't praised anything in the budget. There's nothing there for let, me Let to me praise. give you something that, that might uh, be interesting to you. There, were, there was no introduction of new taxes it, in it, the 2020 it, budget. It, it, Isn't it, it, that something to, to congratulate government? Madam, it's a hoax. How is it a hoax? It's a hoax. The finance minister said it's let me tell you something. introduction of zero taxes. Okay, let me tell you something why it's a hoax. We were in this country when the MPP, as part of their manifesto, and again, uh, to premise that, our vice president, the one then in opposition, our running mate, is the one who actually launched the highlight of this fiscal sector and of the economy. And he said that Ghana is moving from production, taxation to production. Along that lines, what they did was, one, they said they are going to remove the special import levy, re reduce the corporate income tax from 25% to 20%. And they are going to remove the national fiscal stabilization levy when they to come to office. This is their last budget for their administration, completely. Last okay, budget now, before the 2020 election. Yes, yes, that, that's another mandate. So it's a different, yes. I'm not talking about this yes. mandate. This, uh, that's another manifesto. So this manifesto, this is their last what budget. Did you ever hear them talk about national corporate income tax going to be reduced? No. They did not even dis uh, apologize to the people of Ghana. As arrogant as always, they ignored it. Nothing. You know, the national fiscal stabilization levy and the special import levy, all of them were supposed to expire in December 2017. So just about 12 months before they take office. After they, they, they took office, it should have expired. This is a government that has promised us that they are going to remove these taxes, the National Fiscal Stabilization Levy and the Special Import Levy. Instead of them removing it when they came to office, they decided to allow it to run. Only for them to bring the 2018 budget and said, we are going to extend the National Fiscal Stabilization Levy and the special import levy for two more years. They extended it, brought a bill to parliament, reimposed that tax that they had promised the people of Ghana that they are going to actually remove for two years till end 2019. 
So I would have thought that the 2020 budget, uh -huh, that starts from January 2019, January 2020, would have come into effect without the special import levy or in the national fiscal stabilization levy. My sister, your guess is as good as mine. So you believe this is missing? You, you know what is now? done? No. In the budget statement, the Minister of Finance is telling us that he's going to reimpose the national fiscal stabilization levy and the special import levy for five more years. Someone who said he's going to remove it, now he's extended it for seven years. Two plus five. He's going to stay till 20, 2024. And the same person who said who's going to bring a bill to parliament that will reintroduce a tax, he's telling us that there's no tax, new, new tax, so we should clap for him. What would the NDC have done differently? Impressive. NDC will be truthful to the people of Ghana. The National Democratic Congress, that of which I'm part and proud member of, I can tell you that we would have kept faith with the people of Ghana. We would stand by our words if we had said that we are going to remove the National Fiscal Stabilization Levy and then, and, and, and then the, what you call the Special Import Levy. It is for that reason that when we imposed the National Fiscal Stabilization Levy and the Special Import Levy, we decided to introduce a sunset clause in the bill. And in fact, passed by Parliament, it became an act of Parliament that the bill, the, the, that law expires by itself by December 2017. It is for that reason. So we showed faith with the people of Ghana. Only for the people that promised me you and I that that tax is going to expire or they are going to remove it to come and then extend it for how many years? Five good years. That cannot be that there's no new tax in this budget. There's a new tax. The majority leader has said that minority members of parliament speak before thinking. Do you um, think the minority in parliament speaks before thinking? You know, um, I'm, I was surprised when I, I, I read a statement from him. But come to think about it, I'm not shocked because it's his language. He's one person who always insults us. And uh, <coughs> it shows the kind of arrogance that our friends, the MPP, exhibit oftentimes. Anytime you say something and they know they have no answer, they, they resort to insult and insult you. We will not waver. You're saying what we he's saying is not anytime. true. No. Well, what, you see, he failed to address the issue only to say we failed to think. We posed certain questions. We were expecting parliament and government to come and say this, that, 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 and that. But instead of them doing that, oh, don't mind them. They, they don't think before they speak. Speaking of which, you have held several press conferences yes. as opposition. Yes. As most of which the party NPP has not responded to. Mm. How does it feel to be the you opposition see, in, in government and to be often disregarded? You see, um, for me, NPP has been responding to a number of press conferences, isn't it? Why is it that the particular ones that we actually bring out, they fail to respond? Something is hitting them. You think they're they, hiding something? They are. Because, look, for once, the fiscal deficit for 2016 that they keep saying is 9.3. In this budget, they have now come to correct it that it is 6.5 after I've taken them on. Quietly, look at them also. In this budget, they've come to admit that, oh, now it's 6.3, 6 uh, 6.5. I can assure you, I will not relent in the work that I do. I'm not doing it for myself. I'm not doing it just for NDC. I'm doing it for Mother Ghana. Period. Thank you very much, Honorable. It's good having you on Hot Good to see you. Thank you. You've been listening to the Honorable Kessel Atto Forsen. He's made a promise he will not relent on the work that he is doing. He believes he's doing it not for himself, but for Mother